Hi everyone, Mark and I are working on a project and I just wanted to kind of document this a little bit. Um, you know, weekends are a lot of times a big blur for us in between family and work. I say these things all the time, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> You're probably tired of hearing me say it, but it's just us two here and we get done what we can get done when we can get it done. So if you guys are on Instagram and she has a YouTube as well, but she hasn't posted in a while, my friend Katie at the Manor, K-A-T-Y at the Manor, she is in England and she has the most charming greenhouse and beautiful garden and home and just she is spectacular she has wonderful taste and uh has inspired me in a great many ways i actually had the pleasure of meeting katie over summer she was on vacation in philadelphia and we met each other and she is just the most excuse the sirens she is just the most lovely person um so long story short katie has uh, a greenhouse and in her greenhouse she has just paver floor and she used a stencil so i decided to do a similar look hers is darker she has a black greenhouse so she has a uh, black stenciling on her pavers and it really fits with the whole mood and vibe of hers but i decided to go with a green to kind of complement and match more of the white and softer colors that i have in my own greenhouse and my stencil is different too but definitely give katie a follow on youtube Maybe she might pick her channel back up again, or mostly on Instagram, she has lots of wonderful and inspiring posts. So to start, here is the paint we are using. And I'll have to look up the color. Is the color on here? I don't think it is. Uh, nope, it's called, I forget what it's called. Mark, what's the name of this paint? Oh my, okay, I'll be back. Meadow. Secret Meadow. Okay, so that's called Secret Meadow. I got these stencils on Amazon. We've got sand, you know, I Googled this um, and I think Katie has a tutorial on hers as well. But, you know, you look up a paver project if you're interested in doing something like that. Uh, we'll be tamping this down and laying the tiles three across, there's my stump still. Uh, we'll be <laughs> laying the tiles three across. This is just like kind of temporarily laid out just so we can see and this one is backwards because we did that as a upside down rather as a practice tile so that'll be flipped around but if you can imagine starting here at the threshold three pavers across it'll be level with the gravel which i'm going to clear away in just a bit and then the gravel will meet up to the sides and it'll be great for here because well, obviously i'm not moving anything i'm not moving this sink or the tables or anything this is here forever um so it'll meet up close to the sink and for drainage it'll be great to have the gravel under uh you know the side tables and everything but we'll get it as far back uh to the back of the greenhouse as we can i have a bunch of stuff on the floor right now because we had a lot of rain and wind and i started to get nervous that some of my pretty pottery was out so i ran around and picked those up but here's this and maybe by the end of this video i can show you the finished product wouldn't that be nice Are you making happy little trees? That's right. There are no, there are no mistakes here, Mark. Nope. No ha happy accidents. Happy accidents. No. I was, I was hoping you would get that. Mm -hmm. There we go. It looks great. I love it. I love the color. I think it looks so good. When are you gonna take my stump out? I guess that's next. <laughs> okay. Ta-da! Now, Mark, how do we have this on here? You said, okay, so he got this. What is this? Adhesive girl, tape? Um, yeah, mounting tape. Mounting tape. Gorilla mounting tape. And then we've got that brush. Is it a stippling brush? What is that called? Uh, yeah, it's a pouncing, pouncing brush. Okay. I, guess you'd call it. I don't know if Mark wants to be seen, so I'm not showing Mark no. right now. <laughs> Hello everyone. So today is Tuesday and as you can see, I am finished up here. 
So just to talk a little bit about this, Mark has done an incredible job with building my sink table and so many projects for me lately that I said, if you could help me and stencil these, <laughs> I will do the grunt work of removing the gravel and, uh, and all the heavy lifting stuff inside to lay this floor down um, while he painted. So that's what we did. And I don't, you know, moving the gravel is a pain. So if you're thinking of putting a floor down in your greenhouse, try and decide ahead of time. I think it looks fantastic. You can see there's still some spots that are wet. Um, I rinsed it off with a hose last night just to get any excess dust off or dirt off, uh, let it dry, and then I'm going to come in with a little roller and do a coating of just a sealer on top, a clear sealer. Um, you know, you won't see it. It won't be shiny, anything like that. It's just a matte sealer just to help protect the paint a little bit. Um, I, like I said, it's a garage outdoor masonry paint, so it should hold up pretty well. And it's a, a greenhouse, which leads me to my next point. I'm sorry for my shadow, by the way. Um, and I'm clutching my coffee here <laughs> closely to me because I need it. Look at my little stickers. Do you guys love the movie, You've Got Mail? I love You've Got Mail. My bouquet of sharpened pencils. I love it. Um, so... We got sand, we got leveling sand, we have a tamperer already from other projects that we've done. And I was going to do it properly and you know lay that, that base. Well, the fact of the matter is, we all have our levels of interest, right? <laughs> Mine pretty much stops with getting the pavers in here and taking out the gravel because I have far too many other garden-related plant things that I wanna do. Um, so as I was um, scooping away the gravel that we put in here originally, you know, we've got a layer of gravel under here. We've got a hardware cloth and we've got landscape fabric. It's pretty solid and it's pretty flat. Um, this is a little wonky in bits. I mean, it is what it is. Uh, as long as I'm not tripping and as long as these aren't like coming loose and falling all over the place, I don't really care. I'm not looking for perfection here. It's a greenhouse, you know. This isn't my patio. This isn't a path leading up to my house. It's a greenhouse. So I feel incredibly happy and satisfied with how it looks. I am waiting for those papers again to dry. Then I will come in with epoxy. Uh, not epoxy. I will come in with uh, the sealer and roll that on. And then I'm just going to call it a day. Um, because that's where my level of interest on this particular project ends. I just really wanted, you know, to have a little bit of a stylish uh, floor, something a little bit more firm than the gravel in here. I like having the gravel around the perimeter still for any of the water runoff from my sink or from my tables. If I need to put pots down, I can just still put them down here around the perimeter. Um, but that's it. I'm, I'm just, I mean, anything beyond what I'm already feeling so lucky to have in here is just, it's just extra fluff. It's just extra icing on the cake because I'm just so happy to have this space. Anything beyond that is just terrific. So we're going to take back the bags of sand. We don't need them. Um, this was a very cheap and affordable project. I think each paper was under $2. Uh, it's just the 12 by 12 concrete at Home Depot and then can of paint. And then we got a little stippling brush that you saw Mark using. We had that already. Um, so yeah, very affordable and very effective. I really like the look of it. I would have had it go all the way up to the threshold here, but Mark actually built this really smart little, as you can see, I have the door open with this. A lot of times on greenhouses, the doors need to be propped open um, because the storm doors that come with them don't have that, you know, automatic open close kind of hydraulic arm. And we talked about it, Mark designed this little piece and installed that for me. So we could have probably reconfigured it and had the tiles go all the way up to the front. But again, level of interest. My door opens up and I don't have to prop it, love it think the tiles are pretty and look great and will probably absorb more heat 
throughout the day, which will be helpful in the winter, uh, and then radiate that back into the greenhouse. So it's, it's all good. I'm happy. Those are my tomatoes. I don't want to step in here just yet because I got to take my boots off. I don't want to track more dust in. Uh, but I got my tomatoes in the sink there. I got a delivery from uh, Espoma the other day. So I'll be filling up my raised beds with their raised bed mix. Uh, and yeah, it's it's looking good, you guys. So while I have the door open, waiting for those pavers to continue to dry, I just wanted to show you what I set up over here. I added a similar shelf uh, last year. This is just the same type of wood that we have uh, for the raised bed. So it's that two inch thick fur and a couple brackets. I've got a couple of my little pots up here. I really, really like it. And then I just put my little strawberry planter back on its little stool. I had it on last year. That was just to kind of keep it elevated and away from the bunnies as you saw my bunny nest. <laughs> so uh, that was definitely helpful. Had a little extra gravel that I just dumped around just to see what it would start to look like there. Um, there's a huge slat, um, slate pad under the fountain, so I won't have to like scrape that up. It's just on top of that slate pad there, but we're gonna put landscape fabric down in between, I think, um, because this area does get quite weedy. We'll have to see. Uh, we did put, I hate, I hate landscape fabric. I do not like landscape fabric, but we did put a strip behind the greenhouse too because it gets really, really weedy back there. Um, so for like a path that I would walk on uh, on the other side of the greenhouse, we put it there. And we put it behind the shed here last year. We get huge thistle weeds and I don't plant anything back there. So just on top of where will be a walking path, it really has helped us out a lot and we don't feel like disgusted with all the weeds back there and all the junk that was growing up. So for those circumstances, it's okay. But keeping in mind, when you do put a uh, landscape fabric down, um, even in a place where it's supposed to be a, a walking path, weed seeds are gonna blow on top and eventually grow anyway. But hopefully if I could smother out some of those thistle weeds and things like that. Um, and you can use other things that break down like uh, cardboard, I would do that, the sheet mulching. Um, for making new beds, but it's an area, like I said, that I don't plan on planting in. So we put the fabric down just as a walking path. And then eventually, hopefully, less horrible weeds will grow on top of that. <laughs> I had to show you guys how beautiful the snow snowball viburnum is. It is incredible. I don't know where I want to plant this. It's been in this pot. I actually just repositioned it in this pot it was really the the soil level was really low for some reason it started to really recede and the stem was a little bit crooked here so i raised it up added some new potting mix here it's not going to stay here in this border but it's a really large large pot so i will figure out where this is going permanently but in the meantime it should be plenty happy in this large container um, I absolutely love it. Love it, love it, love it. So, so beautiful. You can hear how happy the birds are right now. Looking for things to do out here before the sealer, before I'm looking for things to do out here while the floor is completely drying. But I'll show you the sealer that we got just so in case you want to use this as well. Like I said, it's going to get scraped up and scratched up anyway, I'm sure. And I don't mind that a bit. It is a greenhouse and it is functional. Um, but I'd like to try and prolong it a little bit. And I've got my little roller brush in my pan and I will roll that on in a minute. But as you can see, I have my shovel. So that means I'm going to plant something. <laughs> Let me show you what I'm going to plant. Um, okay. So over here on the two white trellis, I had happy jack clematis. So you guys might remember, sorry, I'm shaking all over. You guys might remember I had arborvitae here. And I think I mentioned in the last video that I removed them. Well, they were really shading out the clematis. They never performed well because really they were behind a couple of arborvitae. How are they going to grow <laughs> behind another plant like that against the wall 
in like total shaded space. So clematis love to have their roots shaded and the remaining plant, you know, the vines in the sun getting, you know, soaking up the sun. So when these hostas fill in, it's going to be a perfect situation now that the arborvitaes are out um, for the, for clematis to take off. So I'm going to plant two new clematis here. Okay, so I got two. These are Bidicella purpurea plena elgins. So I'm sure I butcher all of these names. Uh, anyway, these are a perennial, extremely showy, double rose purple flowers, blooms July through September, used on trellises and arbors, plant in sun or partial shade, grows up to 12 feet. Shade roots, like I was just saying, to keep the soil cool and moist. And this actually also has the pruning, pruning requirement type three. This one needs to be cut way back to about a foot above ground level. It blooms on new wood and you want to do this in late winter before the new growth emerges. See how this is just about a foot tall right now? That's what you would prune it down to every year um, in winter, end of winter, for it to regenerate and regrow. So this is where the old one lived. I'm just gonna dig a hole here on center. I'm gonna plant this, and this time I'm gonna use Garden Tone. It's got a little bit lower nitrogen level. It's a 344 with the first number being the nitrogen. So I'm gonna try this because Clematis appreciate a lower nitrogen fertilizer for their initial planting. Um, and for subsequent plantings, I think you can do like a 10, I'm sorry, for subsequent fertilizing, I think you could do something more online with a 10, 10, 10, but just to get it established, I'm going to use this. I've never used um, the Garden Tone to plant Clematis before, but this is a safe and organic product. As you know, there's not gonna be any burning or problems. Um, so I'm gonna use it and I think it'll do great. My soil surprisingly looks pretty good here with the exception of a bunch of um, gravelly bits. When I moved in, I don't know if they had a gravel patio back this area or what, but there was a lot of gravel <laughs> and still is. I still turn some up every now and then. So I'm just gonna take a bit of this. I'm gonna just put it into like a shovel bowl. Pull dug there and just sprinkle in and around a little bit. Okay, and then you can see here this is the stump from my arborvitae that I cut down. Um, I did not dig it because I tried and it was really, really, really uh really in there for for like good so <laughs> i cut it and i'll just leave this dump there and it doesn't bother me at all this plant has really really nice roots but you can see it is definitely ready to get out of that pot and get planted i just plopped it down in there like so you don't want to overbury it as a general rule of thumb with you know most plants you don't want to bury them too deeply so i have it up just a little bit you can see where the roots start and i've got the uh fertilizer there i have it angled just ever so slightly toward the trellis here you can see it's already making its way and as it starts to grow up a little bit i'll get twine or some little velcro garden strips and just start to try and you know get it going on and growing on its way. Now I'm just gonna backfill the soil here and just firm it down. And that's really it. I think it's gonna be real happy here. You know what I'll do? I'll stick this little tag in here and I'll keep the other one inside the greenhouse so that I have it as a reference, but I kind of think it's fun sometimes to put that tag that you know the wind is gonna blow away and it's gonna get brittle and break in half and then I'll be fishing pieces of a faded label out of here in no time. <laughs> But those hosses will fill in. These get huge. These actually need to be divided in the worst way, but I haven't, and I don't. I should. I'm not going to, but here they are. 
<laughs> I'm not going to this year anyway. Uh, maybe at some point. But these houses will shade those roots. No more obstruction from the arborbite. And fingers crossed they'll have a nice, beautiful trellis on both sides. I'm just going to go ahead and plant the other side now. But I don't need to show you what I just showed you. There'll be two here. <laughs> of course, now I decided to pop out front and fertilize my pink mink. Clematis, here's how she's looking right now. Getting nice and big. Oh, I hung my begonia hanging baskets the other day. Oh, I just love them. I love them. Okay, now I'm gonna see if the floor is dry so I can go ahead and seal that. Okay, we're getting there. I'm gonna leave the door open. I'm gonna let this dry. I'll come seal it and then I'll move everything back in once the sealer is dry because once I put the sealer on, it's gonna look wet. Uh, we did a test tile on the patio the other day because I didn't want to put the sealer on and then have it change the look or have it look too dark or weird. So we tested it out first just to make sure it would look okay. Um, so hopefully the next time I do a clip of this area, <laughs> The floor will be sealed and dry and everything moved back in. That's my hope. And I hope it comes right after this part where I'm talking. <laughs> this area is just too cute right now not to show you. What ended up being, well, what started out as an area where I was just kind of shoving things to get them out of my way as I was working, ended up being this charming little display. <laughs> it looks so cute. So pretty. That's my very mangy chicken topiary that I need to figure out what I'm going to do with. Uh, I'm always going to attempt to work on it. It needs to be trimmed for sure. Um, but what a cute little view. And the tulips popping up there. So sweet. I love it. I wanted to show you my little hellebore patch again because it's so pretty still. Okay, so there are many, many types of hellebores. I can't tell you most of the names of these, but what I can tell you is the one that has this tremendous foliage. Oh my gosh, it is so gorgeous. See, this one's just got the green. This one is called Frost Kiss. There's a series called Frost Kiss and they all have this amazing foliage. And it is this one here. That's a spent bloom there, but oh my gosh, it's so pretty 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 with that foliage and this is a little Guernsey cream clematis that is on its third year I need to pay better attention to taking care of this one I have one on each side it is absolutely beautiful 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 Okay, it's all finished and it's not perfect. I'm not perfect. I think that that's just quite all right. <laughs> I'm not aiming for perfection here. I think in person, the green is much more vibrant. I really wanted something that did not stand out too brightly and kind of complemented all of the creamy white, you know, earthy tones in here and not something overpowering. I love it. I do. I have to say I love it really affordable and I think it looks great. I really do. I really, really like it. If I would have devoted a little bit more time, <laughs> here we go, I would have probably done a 
few things differently, but that's okay. <laughs> I'm happy with it. And it's going to stay that way. Okay, so here is my one. I'm going to call it almost finished raised bed. I love the raised beds here. I've got nasturtiums that I started from seed uh, under grow lights. You don't have to do that. You could start these right in your bed. They're so easy. Maybe nick it with a file or clip it with a nail clipper just to get it uh, started there or soak, pre-sprout it in paper towels, um, damp paper towels, something like that if you wanted to speed it up. I've got a couple cabbages that I bought as already starts. Uh, you can see my little pansies here. She's pretty. I just popped a little Millennium Allium in there because I got the garlic and then thought that would be pretty with the garlic. And then I interplanted some Pro Cut Plum sunflowers that I started from seed. Uh, I have a barge that looks very sad because I had to lift it when I was um, rearranging the bed here. I did start some calendula from seed. I will be putting those in here too and kind of dotting things like that around. I like to put the flowers in with the veggies. Next up, I'm hoping to get my potatoes for sure started. I have them in my refrigerator in the box right now because I got them way too soon. So they're dark and cool at the moment. I don't want them to get mushy or rot. You can see drip tubing here. Uh, yes, I am starting to get the drip you know, just fed through the beds. I'm not hooking it up yet. I already had drip in this area, so it will be easy to tap into from some of the existing lines, but I just want to make sure that I get it, you know, up and under and um, at least get it started, and then I'll worry about hooking it up. For the most part, we get lots of rain here. Uh, hope, hopefully continue to get lots of rain. We're very lucky in that department, and I really like to come out and hand water so I really don't even run the drip irrigation very much, but for those hot, hot days that maybe we're out somewhere as a family or what have you, and I don't feel like coming out and tending to it, it really is nice to know that I can flip that on if I need to.